How do you go about finding the way to God? What does it teach? That you don't have to do anything. That's right. You don't have to do anything, nothing, to find ultimate fulfillment, to find true freedom, to find the way to heaven, to find salvation, to find the way to God. You and I don't have to do anything. Why not? Because it has all been done. Jesus did it all. He opened the way to heaven. He only has the key. That's the gospel. That word gospel means happy news. And the very happy news is that if you desire to have salvation, if you want to be on the way to heaven, on the way to God, it has all been done for you. All that we have to do. Believe it, accept it with a believing heart. But some of you may say, hold on now, uh, don't we have to live good lives, uh, doing the right things, uh, serving other people, showing compassion, being generous? Yeah, definitely. We certainly are to do good. But none of us can get saved that way. For even the very, very best of what we do falls short of God's standard of perfection. Yeah, you, doing good, you cannot imagine a Christian without it. But a Christian doesn't do good works so as to go to heaven. Christians do good works because they go to heaven. You see the difference? Not doing good works so as to go to heaven, but doing good works because a Christian goes to heaven. Marvel again with me at that beautiful statement in Ephesians 2, uh, verses 8 to 10. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. The Gospel says Jesus did it all, nothing more to be done, only believe that Jesus did it all. What did Jesus do? He died. He gave his life. Romans 5, 6 to 8. I'll just pick a selection here from these verses. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, here is another strange thing about the Christian gospel. Christ died for ungodly people. Christ died for sinners. Now where else in the history of the world can you hear a story like that? Nowhere. Nowhere only here in the Word of God. Christ, the Son of God, He is God, giving His life not for nice people, good people, attractive people. Romans 5 verse 10 again, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to Him through the death of of his son. Isn't that mighty strange? Isn't that mighty peculiar that God himself came down to love enemies, to love hostile people, sinful people, powerless people, ungodly people, us, 
to love them that much, to love them all the way to heaven. What an amazing story. Where else can you hear that? And no wonder that 4.4 billion people out there think that all this is rather odd, foolish, silly. That's the story of the Bible. The righteous anger of God towards all these ungodly people, those sinners, those enemies, and then the Bible gives the news of the gospel. His own son, Jesus, God's son, who is God himself, absorbing in himself all that righteous judgment against us. Taking all that upon himself and setting us free. You may remember some of the words that Jesus cried out on that curse of cross when he was in total agony. He cried, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you deserted me, left me completely? Why? So that you and I would never be forsaken by God anymore. Never, ever. You may have heard or seen this little illustration before, but um, I'm going to use this book for that and my open hand. My open hand, just imagine that that is a picture of a human being, picture of you, picture of me, reaching out toward God yearning to receive the light and the favor and the blessings of God. But hold it now, we have become disobedient. We are sinners. We have disobeyed God. So there it is, the burden of our sins is in between God and me. The light and the love and the favor of God cannot reach me. For there is that heavy burden of guilt, of sin, in between God and me. This hand is a picture of Jesus. God's own dear son. Close communion with God. Receiving all the love that the Father in heaven has for his son. Now the amazing thing of the gospel truth is this. That Christ Jesus came to this earth to take upon himself that heavy burden that was really resting on all of us. That heavy burden of sin, of God's anger, and it pushed him down and down right all the way to the cross. My God, why have you left me? But look at us. Why have you left me, God, Jesus cried out, so that we never will be forsaken by God, so that we again can receive the love and the favor of God himself. Can you see how that works? There is no other way. There is no other way. Just think again of the illustration. Picture again your upraised hand. By nature, you do not receive the love and the light coming from God. There is this heavy burden. See the book on my hand, that barrier between God's grace and you. And if you do not turn to Jesus, 
that heavy burden of guilt will press you down. It will press you down all the way. It will push you all the way down into hell. Think again of what the Lord Jesus wants you to do. To turn to him in faith and say, Lord Jesus, please take my burden upon you. And Jesus says, yes, glad, gladly believe it that I've done it 2,000 years ago on the cross. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you with empty hands. Well, maybe not, not empty. We offer you our sins and our stupidity and our disobedience. And then we will pray that you would fill these hands of ours with your grace with your mercy. We pray that in your name. Amen. These would be appropriate closing words to take home, to meditate, to think of it. Isaiah 53. Just three verses. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life.